again in this session of climatology we would be talking about the topic humidity now in very simple terms i can say humidity is the amount of water vapor that is present in the atmosphere or air now when we talk about humidity we will be understanding the various types of humidity measurement of humidity and its relevance in climatology so let's first start with the types of humidity when we describe about the various types of humidity we can explain humidity in three simple types first is absolute humidity specific humidity and relative humidity now when we say absolute humidity i can say it's the actual amount of water vapor that is present in the atmosphere to understand uh, uh, the absolute humidity i can say is the mass of the water vapor uh, that is present per unit volume of the air so mass of water vapor divided by volume of air that can help you understand the absolute humidity absolute humidity is also known as vapor density and vapor con condensation now since it's the mass of water vapor present in the volume of air uh, when we are trying to measure absolute humidity what would be the unit the unit would be grams per cubic meter and if i try to understand the same in terms of british units i can say it would be grains per cubic foot and what is grain uh, grain is 1 grain is equal to 0.0648 grams so if we want to convert grains to grams we can use this simple uh, conversion that's 1 grain is equal to 0.0648 grams now this is what is absolute humidity so absolute humidity uh, neglects the pressure now next is specific humidity specific humidity i can say is the mass of water vapor per unit mass of area uh, sorry mass of air mass of water vapor per unit mass of air so that is what is <coughs> specific humidity specific humidity <coughs> excuse me can be written as mixing ratio plus 1 upon 1 plus mixing ratio which is denoted by w so w denotes the mixing ratio here now mixing ratio and specific humidity are interchangeably used but they are not exactly the same as you can see specific humidity is equal to mixing ratio divided by 1 plus mixing ratio so there is a minimal amount of error that can be seen and when i try to explain mixing ratio it's the ratio of mass of uh, mass of water vapor that is present per unit mass of the dry air so when i talk about mixing ratio it's mass of water vapor present per unit mass of dry air so that is what is mixing ratio and with the help of mixing ratio we can calculate the specific humidity the next is relative humidity so relative humidity is the maximum amount of moisture that a set of air can can uh, contain at a given temperature so it's i like it in simple terms i can say it's the maximum amount of water vapor that air can contain at a given temperature so if i say <coughs> there is 30 grams of air that's present and you have on the other side you have 15 grams which is actually present so the relative humidity would be 15 by 30 that's 50% relative humidity if it is dry air it would be 0% relative humidity if it is saturated air it would be 100% relative humidity and how do we calculate the dew point dew point is the water that is that condenses uh, that condenses at the ground and this happens only when the air is fully saturated so once the air is fully saturated we reach the dew point and this dew point 
has a good relationship with relative humidity because if I say relative humidity is 100% that means dew point and temperature are at the uh, are the same and if the temperature starts to decrease what would happen is there would be condensation that would occur and water would start to come into the liquid state. So that is how we understand the relationship between relative humidity and dew point. Now coming on to measurement of uh, the humidity. Now <coughs> when we try to measure humidity the instrument that measures humidity is known as hygrometer and the signs or I could say the means in which we measure the humidity uh, how we determine the humidity is known as hygrometry. So these are the two commonly used terms to understand humidity. Now there are various types uh, or various types of instruments or equipments that can help you measure humidity. In a very simple term if I talk about analog hygrometer, analog hygrometer is a hygrometer that has a coil and it's analog it's not the digital format so as you can see here it has a uh, humidity reading here and a coil that connects to the uh, bottom base while there is a digital analog which shows the relative humidity exactly in terms of uh, numbers that can be read even by a small child. So you have this is an example of digital thermometer while this is an example of uh, uh, sorry digital hygrometer and this is an example of analog hygrometer. This is what is a psychrometer. So psychrometer I can say is also known as wet and dry bulb hygrometer and what happens here is it is a kind of sling arrangement that can be seen here so it is also known as sling hygrometer so you have two measurements one where you have the end point that is dipped in water and soaked and tied with a cloth the other end which is a dry so you have the variation in the two thermometer one is the dry and another is the wet when the water from this evaporates it leads to cooling and that results into lowering of the temperature. So this is how you understand the wet and dry bulb uh, hygrometer. Then you have humidistat. Humidistat is, acts as a uh, controller for humidity and it sets on the limit for, or for the dehumidifiers. It explains this much can be the maximum limit or it sets the maximum limit for the humidity. Then you have various satellites. It explains the water concentration at around 4 to 12 kilometers. <clears throat> so you have at around 4 to 12 kilometers, you have the satellites which talk about, which explain the, uh, the concentration of water vapor and these are measured by the infrared sensors. Now next is hair hygrometer. This is a very interesting hygrometer because it uh, explains uh, kind of uh, changes in the relative humidity just by means of human hair. So it explains that you have a human hair with you and how the length of the human ha hair varies with moisture can be noted by hair hygrometer. Then you have torsion hygrometer. Torsion hygrometer what it does is it twists, it twists the hair so you have the hair that twists along and this twisting leads to rotation and expansion. So you have expansion and contraction and that helps you read the amount of humidity that is present in the atmosphere. The next is electrical absorption hygrometer. <coughs> This explains the changes in the electrical polarity that occur. So what happens is there is a kind of black carbon that is dispersed on a plastic strip and this is known as humidity strip. And this strip helps you understand the amount of moisture that is present in the atmosphere. The next is basically it tries to absorb the moisture and once it absorbs the moisture it causes changes in the resistance of the circuit. So you have the circuit that is here and you have the changes in the resistance of the circuit in the uh, electrical absorption hygrometer. The next is diffusion hygro, uh, hygrometer. What it does is it leads to diffusion of water between the porous membrane 
and that diffusion of water helps you analyze the amount of humidity that is present in the atmosphere. The next is spectral hygrometer. A spectral hygrometer explains the measurement or the absorption of the uh, water vapor in the spectral band. So these are the measurement of uh, humidity. Now next is the role of humidity in climatology. So we, we will understand three basic things. The first is the humidity coefficient, humidity index and finally <coughs> humidity province. So humidity coefficient was given by Angstrom. So A.G. Angstrom explained humidity coefficient and what he said was humidity coefficient can be explained as precipitation divided by 1.07 raised to T where T is the mean temperature in degree Celsius. So he explained that is how we understand uh, humidity coefficient and this coefficient helps to analyze the pre precipitation effectiveness in a given region. The next is humidity index. This was explained by Thorn White and Thorn White kind of used this uh, index to understand the climatic classification of the region and he classified it as 100 S by N where S is the water surplus and N is the water that is needed. So he explained it as a ratio of the surplus water by the water that is required and this is what he named as humidity index. Later on, he, uh, Thornweight itself gave the concept of humidity province where he tried to explain the various regions based on the uh, humidity and he led around two classifications. One was in 1931 and another was in 1948. In 1948 and 31, both the cases he divided <coughs> the region into five provinces A, B, C, D and E. In 98, uh, 48, he named it as per humid, humid, subhumid, semi arid, and arid. So, this was a kind of very simple classification in 1948. However, in 1931, he tried to explain A region as the wet region and he called it as the main forest. The next was B region which he called as humid or the forest region. Humid or the forest region. The C region he classified it as subhumid. So the C region was classified as subhumid and grassland. D region was classified as semi-arid and steppes. And finally, the E province was classified as arid and desert. So there was a kind of minor variation in the two uh, provincial uh, categorization that he laid forward. And finally, this helped to understand the amount of moisture index. So under this um, humidity province concept, what he tried to understand was the moisture index. And he explained that this moisture index is equal to 100 into water surplus minus 60 into water deficit divided by potential evapotranspiration. So that was the formula that he gave to understand the climatic classification of the region and based on that he classified the various uh, the provinces and this we will be further discussing when we will be talking about the climate classification given by Thornwitt. So he introduced the concept of moisture index and this moisture index explained as was explained as 100 into water surplus minus 60 into water deficit divided by the potential evapotranspiration. So with this we understand the very fundamentals of humidity in climatology. We will be applying the concepts of humidity more when we will be talking about the climatic classification uh, given by Thornwitt and other scholars in the further lessons. You can subscribe to our channel for any further updates.